Odell. Odell. Oh, sorry, he's just doing his impression of a horse. Odell, please. It's not even funny. And it doesn't even sound like a horse. Um, right. Let's move on. I'll speak to him in a moment. Um, okay, it's Thursday, guys. It's extended right day. Um, and yesterday we were looking and talking about conjunctions. So we're just going to do a really quick recap on that. Um, in the bubble, we worked on some sentences together, um, which is fine. And we were able to use um, a different conjunction for each one of these headings. Now, really today... Um, I'd like you to focus on uh, the time conjunctions which are under the heading of when but obviously you can use any of the others but do try and make your time connectives or time conjunctions a focus for your right today and um, hopefully you've, you've put some of those onto your plan anyway. Okay moving on we're going to get straight to the action today you're going to write your draft diary entry. Now, let's think who you are and where you are and what has happened. Okay, so you've experienced the horrors of the day and night. You are separated from your wife. Your head is full of the whiskey or full of whiskey and the terrible thoughts and images that you have suffered. Your new friend, okay, this is you writing, your new friend, the soldier, has passed out and it's time for you to write in your diary. So all of those events on your timeline have happened. You're now sitting at a table, possibly by candlelight, completely exhausted and you're writing in your diary. Now remember, when we do a diary entry, it's an informal style of writing so it's almost as if you're telling a friend your diary about your day's events okay so we're going to have a look at waggle okay now my waggle is quite detailed i also include included a little sketch as well um the waggle is in the resource um, area, so you can use that, you can read through it. Um, I would say if you've got a piece of paper, um, you could magpie some um, ideas or vocabulary phrases uh, for your own right today. Your diary entry does not need to be as long as this one. Um, so just enjoy your writing. That's what I'm going to say. Enjoy your writing. Show off. What what can you do? So I've added little bits of details uh, that are not from the story. So I had a little think and I thought I'm going to pop that bit in there just to interest my reader. OK, and I also I gave my wife a name and my cousin a name. Um, just as I would do in my diary, okay? I would have used their names. So, um, let's have a little read through. Now, you can make up your own date as well. I'm going to say, um, at the top here, I've put Thursday the 6th of August 1904, but I'm, I'm not going to use that date. I'm going back to my 1889. So, pick a date, pick a year, um, somewhere around there. OK, so let's read. <clears throat> Last night I had terrible, terrible dreams. My head was filled with images of death and destruction. This morning I woke with a huge crashing pain bearing down on my chest and it felt like my fists had been clenched tight all through the night. Little did I know that these dreams would turn into a nightmarish reality through the course of the day. Dot, dot, dot. OK, so I've done a little bit of an introduction to uh, my diary entry there now here's my sequence of events 
I rose early at about 5.30 a.m. I was drenched with sweat. I gazed at my beautiful Kate and was careful not to wake her. Despite being exhausted, I made my way to Horsell Common. The sun was shining and I felt a new optimism come over me. Soon I'd bumped into two artillery men and they were arguing about what the Martians looked like. So I told them what I had seen. They had laughed. Octopus things? They deserve to be murdered. Little did they know their own fate. I spent most of my morning and afternoon talking to people and making sketches of the chewed up land. I was fearful of venturing any closer to where the massacre had taken place the day before. Then, at about 3pm, I headed back home. As I was nearing Woking, I could hear behind me the muffled de detonation of artillery fire. Something was happening, and for this reason, my pace quickened. All I could think about was Kate and our future. Later in the day, probably at about 6pm, Kate and I were in the summer house when we heard an almighty crash. The panes of glass violently rattled around us as a nearby house was struck by a heat ray, trembled and finally collapsed into a mound of rubble and black smoke. Consequently, we ran into the house and hastily packed. I told Kate just to bring the essentials. We had no time to spare. Luckily, I had a cousin who I knew I could trust. I'd not seen John for over two years. However, I knew that he would welcome us with open arms. We had to evacuate immediately, so I rushed to the Spotted Dog Inn and asked to borrow a horse and cart. I gave the landlord two pounds and promised to return the cart by the morning. I returned to our house and called for Kate. Then we headed eastwards towards Letterhead with the old horse and cart brimming with our belongings. Now it was getting dark. The journey had taken longer than I had anticipated. The horse kept on getting spooked whenever it heard the aloo coming from the advancing Martians, and it took ages to settle her. Eventually we arrived at my cousin's, around 9pm. I was right, John welcomed us in with his kind heart. He got us settled next to the warm open fire, and it was now that I told him of the hellish scenes that I had witnessed from the day before. Unfortunately, I do not think he believed me. He poured me several draughts of ale whilst Kate was having a bath. We ate a fine meal of stew and dumplings. Then I waited until Kate went to bed. As the darkness of night fell, I checked my pocket watch. It was exactly 11pm. I made the difficult decision to leave Kate and return the horse and cart back to Woking. With a newfound courage, I was on the road heading west. Under the cover of dark, I stood more of a chance of keeping safe. Or so I thought. Soon I could see the sky illuminated by a blood-red glow. I knew that Woking was burning to the ground. A storm was heading my way. At that moment, a huge metal tripod reared up from behind some trees. Its metal cowl was spinning like a top, and it let out a thunderous halloo. The horse bolted, throwing me from the cart. Sadly, it toppled down the hill. The cart smashed, and by the stillness of her body, I knew that she lay dead. I had no time to lose. Feeling slightly bewildered, I gathered my thoughts. It was at this point that I was at my lowest. Alone, cold, battered and bruised. The tripod moved on as I crawled through the brambles in the opposite direction. As a result of the Martian attack on Woking, I could barely recognise my street or house. I scrambled over piles of debris. Dead bodies were scattered about. My mind raged. Finally, I made it to my door. The house, our home, was still standing. The door was open. 
as we had left it. I poured myself a generous whisky in order to settle my nerves. Suddenly, I could hear a soft, strange muttering coming from outside. Cautiously, I peered through the letterbox and saw a soldier stumble to the ground. I carefully drew him into the sitting room. He was badly burned and was suffering from trauma. I can only imagine what the poor fellow must have been through. We drank more whiskey and it burned our throats. As we watched through a shattered window, Woking burned to the ground. We found some bread and jam and ate this in the dark. The soldier told me of the horrors that should never be uttered and for this reason I cannot commit them to you, my dear diary. There is only a little candlelight left as I finish sharing my thoughts with you. I no longer know what the hour is because my precious pocket watch was smashed when I fell from the cart. I would say a prayer before I slip into unconsciousness. However, my faith in God is no longer. What will tomorrow bring? Okay, so that was my diary entry. Um, now there was a lot of detail and description in there, but just remember what Michael Rosen said. You need to use that emotive um, vocabulary or words to interest your reader. Okay, make it interesting. Now, really enjoy your writing today. Um, use each event as a, a different paragraph. Okay, um, you can use the times that we had in our planning session. So from 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 11 p.m., you can make up your own time. Okay, your own timeline. Good. Think about using your senses in your writing. Think about uh, the fantastics as well. So let's just finish with a final thought. There's your timeline. That's really uh, what you want to focus on for a structure. And we'll read through our musts and our mights. Okay, so you must write a draft diary entry. You should use time conjunctions. Okay, you could express your emotions and opinions. Um, I used a rhetorical question at the end of mine. Uh, you might make a prediction about what will happen next. So as a result of this, what's going to happen next? Okay, you really enjoy your writing today, guys. Um, it's Thursday. Keep safe. Um, have a great day in the bubble. Uh, hi, Mrs. Coleman. And I'm going to say cheerio.